So you can take a break and give this some time to dry, or you can go ahead and keep working. If you keep working, you just want to keep in mind this paint is still wet. So I'm cleaning out my brush, running it over the edge of the water container a few times, and then I'm going to choose a color for my actual flower blossoms. So I think I'm going to go with this red here. So I'm going to do a couple of different techniques to see what I'm going to settle on. So I couldn't paint the flower by placing the brush at the end of the branch and pulling away with short, quick strokes. And you saw in the examples of the paintings we looked at in the presentation before, there's lots of images where the artist only used a few brush strokes, and by using them very carefully and thinking about the direction they went in and how they used the brush, those few strokes make it look like a flower. Now, some other techniques we've talked about before would be stippling. Stippling is where you dab your brush. So if I dab my brush near the end of the stem here, and I let those marks overlap, well, I've seen flowers that look like that too. So there's flower blossoms here, there's a flower blossom here, but they're painted using different techniques. So you can decide, you can do the stippling technique where you're dabbing your brush, letting those dab marks overlap to create your overall shape, or you're using a brush stroke, this looks like I need more paint, where you pull the brush in different directions. Pressing down, it's a lot like the calligraphy scroll you guys were working on last week. When I press down more, the mark is thicker. When I lift up, the mark is thinner and skinnier. So I can really control the effect I want. So keep in mind if the ends of your branches have a lot of wet paint on them, when you stick your brush on there, if you stick it into that paint, it'll actually mix with that color. So what you'll do is after you've blown out your branches, is you'll actually be working on painting on your flower blossoms. You can change colors if you want to. You can use more than one. So you're not going to sit here and paint on a whole ground, but what you might also do is sort of put the effect of the ground in there. So I'm going to get some brown on here, and I think a stippling technique would work really well for this. Where I have some places that look like the ground is sort of there behind it, around the base of the plant. Now what you can do next in a lot of the paintings you saw, an artist had signed it, but we couldn't read because it's in a different language. So what you can do is use your calligraphy symbols and actually add them into this painting as a piece of artwork. Here I'm showing you guys a sample where I actually worked on one already, where I did a painting, but then I also did a calligraphy scroll beside it. So what you could do if you don't have enough paper or you want to save paper, I have enough room off to the side here where I could go to last week's assignment, look at those calligraphy symbols, and I could add those in. There's even some that are in the slideshow for the painting examples that we looked at before. Good luck, guys.